Hey, good morning, guys. I want to apologize. I haven't uh, been uh, on the porch uh, uh, in the mornings much lately. Um, just business has been keeping me crazy busy, and uh, um, I just haven't had a lot of time in the mornings. But I have a little time this morning, so I want to uh, just share something that I've been studying uh, that I thought I would share with you guys. Uh, I've been reading a book. Uh, it's called uh, High Performance Habits. Uh, it's not a, a Christian book per se, but it's just... Uh, just a great uh, book about the, the psychology of uh, how we think. And, and uh, the author, uh, of Brendan Burchard, made a comment uh, about how, uh, talking about a client of his and how sometimes we don't go through the motions in our lives. We actually go through the emotions in our lives. We go through the emotions. And, and we've done a few polls on here and, and uh, I've noticed that uh, a constant prayer need is uh, over anxiety. We, we deal with a lot of anxiety. You know, in our world, we're, we're in turmoil. There are all these crazy turmoils going on in our world, all these uh, school shootings, um, all this uh, uh, gender dysphoria, uh, all of this, uh, there's just all these things in our in our world that are that are confusing and and anxious, and uh, the economy sucks, and uh, uh, and so we uh, we have financial worries and all these things, and so we have a lot of anxieties, and we, we don't want to do those. We don't want to just go through the emotions. We want to uh, control our feelings about these things. And this is a very biblical principle. I want to share with you in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, the Apostle Paul even considers this a spiritual warfare issue, uh, the, the, the dealing with emotions and feelings, emotions and feelings. He says uh, in verse 4, chapter, uh, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4, he says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal or fleshly, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, pulling down spiritual strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts, exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So literally controlling how we think about all this craziness that goes on in our world. All these arguments against God, against truth, against the word, all of these things. We can literally take all of our thoughts about these things captive for Christ. And, he, and Paul's saying, and this is a spiritual battle. This is warfare. The ability to take these problems, these issues, these fears, these anxieties, these, these uh, uh, depressive uh, things that happen in our lives, take those thoughts captive and literally control how we feel about them. How do we know this is true? So Paul also wrote uh, Philippians, which is... The joy book is literally how uh, theologians consider them. Uh, and because in, in Philippians, Paul says, Consider it all joy when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. So when you have trials, consider that joy. Consider it joy. I'm like, well, well, easy for him to say. Was it easy for him to say? He wrote those words while in prison in Rome. I think it was Rome. He's in prison writing to the church at Philippi. Hey, consider it joy when you encounter trials. He was literally in prison. So, so he wasn't depressed about it. He had been, he had been uh, arrested before. And so it says, instead of going through the emotion of, oh my gosh, here we go again. I'm going to have to sit. No. In fact, most of Paul's writings were written from prison. So he literally considered this Oh, thank God, I'm going to be able to get caught up on some writing. <laughs> so he considered it joy, even though the situation he was in was not ideal. We can literally take our, are your emotions real? Whenever you feel, oh, this feels like whenever my husband left or whenever my wife left, that's a real emotion. 
Absolutely. Oh, this feels like when my child got sick. And I know some of you on here, this feels like when I lost my grandchild or when I lost, we lost our child. And uh, uh, this is what it feels like. And those are legitimate emotions. But how we feel about it can change. My father passed away in September. I've talked about this a million times. Uh, and I'm sad about that. That emotion about that is sadness. And I can continue to wallow in that sadness. And I can, I can uh, go through those emotions. Or I can feel happy that I had the time I had with my dad, that I had such a great dad, that I have such a, a pillar of faith to look at and say, I want to be like my dad. I want to walk like he walked. And so I can feel proud instead of sad. I get to choose that feeling. Uh, what got me thinking about this, I, I have people say to me, uh, and recently someone said, uh, we were talking about moving forward and, and getting to a better place in their life. And they said, and, and, and they literally said to me, I'm just not in a good place right now. I'm not ready to do that. I'm not in a good place. Well, that is not a condition. That's a choice. You're choosing to not be in a good place because you could choose, you know what? This sucks, but I'm going to make the best out of it. You can make that as a choice. And that's what Paul's saying here. Take those thoughts captive. You know what? Here's the thought. It's, it's hurting me. I'm going to take it captive. I'm going to battle here because I'm going to feel better about it. You can literally choose how you feel about these bad situations that happen in your life. You get to make that choice. This is absolutely a scriptural, biblical principle. We can do this. Instead, what we sometimes do is we isolate ourselves. We say, oh, uh, this feels like love. And the last time I was in love, I got hurt. So I'm, I'm get away. I'm, I'm not going to do this. Uh, or, uh, or this feels like a great friendship. And it remind, the last friend betrayed me and, and talked bad about me behind my back. So now I'm not going to do this anymore. And so what we'll start to do is we'll start to isolate ourselves from, from people because we're, tr we're trying to, we, we're just going through the emotions. We're letting the emotions dictate how we live our lives instead of telling us our lives. This is how I'm going to feel about this. I'm going to feel differently about this. You're literally taking a step to the side and looking at your situation from a different angle and saying, how can I take this thought captive for, for Christ, as Paul said. Let's read that again. The weapons of our war warfare are not fleshly. They're not, and, and they're not people. People are uh, uh, aren't your weapons either. None of this is carnal, but these weapons are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. All these things, these walls that are keeping you from being the person that God has created you to be, we can tear those things down spiritually, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against uh, the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. We've got to capture those thoughts for Jesus and say, here's my thought, Lord. I'm thinking this is what always happens to me. I've had a lot of those thoughts. Uh, here we go again. I have to take those thoughts captive and say, I'm just, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to be real uh, vulnerable here. So uh, uh, I had a, a, I've had the thought that after a couple of years, I get boring to whoever my spouse, partner is. But after a couple of years, the new wears off. I'm not exciting anymore. I just work a lot. And uh, I tell the same dad jokes over and over. I'm just kind of boring. And then people leave. And, uh, and I've had it happen enough that I go, well, uh, here we go again. This is, this is me. But I'm learning to take that thought captive and say, you know what? How do I choose to feel about this? Am I going to be depressed about it and continually beat myself up? Or am I going to say, you know what, I'm moving forward. And, uh, and the people that want to be in my life and want to come with me, they're going to come with me. They're going to, they're going to, you know, the people that know me and love me are going to know me and love me. And, and the truth is, God knows me and loves me. And I'm taking that 
thought captive for him, for Christ. You know, who am I in him? That's what really matters. And so guys, we can do that. We can, we can take these thoughts captive. We can change the way we view our situations. And uh, uh, just as Paul said, we can consider it all joy when we encounter these trials. When, we're consider, when, we, when we encounter sickness, when we encounter uh, uh, death in our family, uh, in our friends, uh, financial difficulties, all these things that we go through. Consider it joy because this is testing our faith. What can we do with this? What letter can we write from prison? What, you know, what gift can we give people? And so, uh, so I just want to encourage you guys, take these thoughts captive. Let's not go through the emotions. Let's choose how we're going to feel about them so that we can move forward and we can become the people, the men and the women of God that he's created us to be. And so that's my encouragement for everybody today. Hope you guys have a great day. Uh, feel free to comment. I, I, I love reading people's comments about uh, uh, how you, you know what God's doing in your life. And, and uh, I've been getting a lot of messages from people uh, saying they're really loving these devotionals and these times on the porch. And so I'm so grateful for that. I hope that we're all, all growing together and praying for one another together. And I love all the prayer. Uh, everybody's praying for each other. And uh, I got, uh, actually, uh, my friend Jason, his, uh, his dad is doing well and recovering well from his heart surgery. So you guys just continue to pray for one another. And uh, let's take those thoughts captive. And uh, everybody have a great day.